Hey everybody, Jeff Williams here with AskJeffWilliams.com, or as I'm starting to become affectionately known as Buckskin Joe. Okay, now today we're going to talk about load sampling. Now I know a lot of guys out there don't talk a lot about it. They mostly cover plaster sampling. I think it's important that you know load sampling because you never know when you're going to come across a rich deposit laying on the ground and everybody's been walking over because nobody's taking the time to sample it. So I'm going to show you the tools you're going to need to do it. It's really not that difficult. And once you start to get the hang of it, you'll be sampling before you know it. So here we go. Ah, okay. First thing you're going to need is that you're going to need a bucket. Something to stick all your pieces of sampled rock that you're finding, whether it's nice juicy white quartz, or you got some nice limonite, or even some plumbo jerosite. Yeah. You're going to need a bucket because you need to store all your samples in there. And I strongly recommend that you keep a log of where you're getting all this stuff from. In case you happen to find rich deposits inside of these samples, you're going to want to remember where it came from. So keep a log on where it came from. Next, you're going to need one of these guys. It's a mortar and pestle. I recommend getting the large one. The reason being is I've tried the small one and it just simply isn't big enough to handle the type of samples I like to do. So get the larger of the two. You can find them anywhere. Uh, I got this one from Keen Engineering. They make some really good ones and they're heavy duty. Next, you're going to need a classifying screen. I like the number eight classifying screen and there's a reason why they call it that. Number four, number eight, what have you. All you have to do is remember is if you get a tape measure out, the basically the size of the screen is dictated by how many square openings there are in each linear inch. So all you have to do is if it's a number eight screen, there's eight square openings per linear inch. And that's how you can tell the different sizes of screens, whether it's a 16 or an eight or four or what have you. So I like using number eight. It gets it down to the size and consistency that I really like. And of course, last but not least, every prospector's gotta have one of these. That's right, a gold pan. And like I said before, I really like these Garrett Super Sluices. Got the huge ridges right here. Ain't no gold getting over that. So I'm gonna show you how to do all this, put it together so you can start sampling. So here we go. Ah, okay, so gone ahead and collected up all my samples and I got my mortar and pestle out and now we're gonna start grinding. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this good looking plumbo jerosite and I'm gonna crush it up. So first thing, Eye protection, I can't stress that enough because if a ship comes out of that uh, mortar and pestle, it's going to get you in the eye. So, safety first. Okay, so. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see where you can see that beautiful looking plumbo jerosite in there. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take that. We're going to make sure that's clean. I got it in a nice soft pile of dirt here. See that? Don't get your fingers out here on the edge because if you hit it with this, oh, ho, 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 that's going to hurt bad. And don't put them on the edges here either. I've done that too where you come down and you hit your fingers or your thumb. Man, that can really hurt. So you want to keep it down around the bottom of the lip here. See that? And just keep grinding away. Okay, so then you take your gold pan like such. And you take all the contents of this. Dump them out. Make sure there's nothing in there. Okay. Screen that down. And then whatever you have left, you put it back in, like such. And then you do it again. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna take it over to the water and pan it out and see if there's anything in it. So let's go. Okay, remember what I told you? You don't want sulfides, you don't want tellurides, you want free mill gold. Uh, something that you can pan out. Cause I'm telling you, you don't have the means or the resources to get gold out that's been chemically locked up in the rock. So here we go. You 
you want to stratify that really well, there's a lot of iron in there. You can see how red that is. See that? All that iron that's in there. Stratify. Gently, gently wash it out because that iron is heavy like the gold. And sometimes if the gold is small enough, it'll actually sit right on top. And if I haven't mentioned it before, make sure you put a little jet dry in here or dishwasher soap because if the gold is fine, which it usually is when it's locked up in this rock, it might just want to float right out of your pan. Okay, we're down to the very bottom here. I got the sun behind me. And I'm going to tap it a few times and I'm going to swirl to see if I got anything. So let's come here, take a look at this. There, see it? I don't know if you can see that right there. There you go. Let's see if I can tap that up for you. I don't know if you can see that. See some really tiny pieces right up and through there. See that? There's a nice chunk right there. I like that. Okay. Well, there you go. I hope I've taught you the basics on how you load sample. I know there's a whole lot that I left out and there's a whole bunch of different rocks out there that I didn't mention either on what you're supposed to be looking for. But that gives you the very basics of how you're supposed to do it. And that way you can get out there and if you happen to see something that looks like it's got something in it, you know what to do. So until next time, this has been Jeff Williams with AskJeffWilliams.com saying, if you want gold, you gotta be bold. Take care.